What's up guys and gals, my name is Splattercat, we are here setting out from the Chapel of Lights, the Cahapel of Lights, the Cahapel of Ligots, I don't know, things are spelled so funnily in life, you ever notice that, like, why are things spelled the way that they are, it's gotta be some weird linguistic hangover from way back in the day, like Old English something, but it just stays that way, because, eh, tradition, why not, although in my experience, tradition is always the worst reason to keep doing anything, but, let's not complain too much, we're not going to start out on that note. Welcome to the next episode of Sunless Sea, in which we attempt to not go crazy and butcher our crew in a desperate attempt to keep them from mutinating. Uh, which is not nearly so... Ah, I see Palmerston, good. Port Cecil was around here somewhere, I'm just not sure where. Oh yeah, I forgot about those. Those are those really speedy submarine thingies. I remember those being quite dangerous, as I recall. I mean, I've never fought one, but my guess is that they're dangerous. Let's go ahead and get ourselves next to the shore. You can outrun things because their pathfinding is really, really bad. They just try and directly come to you in a direct line, and if you can run them off on the rocks, the AI seems to have problems and get confused and gets irritated with itself. And it's like, yeah, I'm quitting and I'm going home. I don't want to play anymore. And so into Pollard, Palmerston, we go. I heard that they had cheap supplies here, so this might work out for us. Let's go to the shops first. Oh yeah, they do. They have fuel for very, very cheap. And since we're low on fuel, that's actually not bad. We might consider... They have Zoop here for the same price that you would... Okay, so they have Zoop. They have Devil Bone Dice, which only sell for 20 in London. All of these are really not the best idea. You would think that these would actually have a pretty good markup because it's a long run from Port Palmerston all the way down to London. You'd think that you'd get like 20 per run on that or something. I mean, I don't know. That's just how it seems to me. I, mean, they haven't, they, I don't think they've messed with the economic system yet. Let's go to the crater first. They say the road to hell is paved with good intentions. Up the road we go. Did they admit visitors to the Brimstone Convention? Probably not, but you never know. They might sell you tickets. Look down and see Port Palmerston like a toy and the ruins like gravel. You've come far, but the volcano's cone still rears above you. Rest a little before you go to the last half mile. In occurrence, your encounters with the wistful devilist quality is now won. You found a little cottage by the gate to the Brimstone Convention. The road to the crater ends at a brass gate in the crater wall. Beside it stands an oddly charming little cottage. It's thrown together from pumice and basalt, but it features honeysuckle, an equally charming devilist in a tea-grown leans or in a tea-grown... Oh, a tea gown. A tea gown leans against the cottage wall, twirling a parasol and fanning herself. I'm the guardian of this place, she remarks languidly. You may not pass, but I can offer you a cup of my armillaria tea. Armillaria tea? That's not one of the poisonous ones, is it? You're pretty sure it's not. No doubt that she'd be much less pleasant if you tried to break down the gate, but just now she's a courteous, soft-voiced woman in a tea gown. The tea is hot and nutty and rather pleasant. She asks about your voyages. She is desperate for news of London, of its mists, its nights, its sick, its poor, its fire. She tactfully turns aside questions about the convention, but she shares some of the secrets of the Neath. Come see me again, she says. Next time you're here, she shugs gracefully. Bring me a present if you like. Well, aren't you a little bit forward? We'll deliver these smuggled souls, and then we'll go back to London and get paid. We'll get our port folk. Okay, so we got the port report for Port Palmerston. They don't do us any harm. They stay up there, and we stay down here. If hell's fighting itself, that's good for us all, isn't it? And it looks like that's probably all we're going to be able to do here. I will, however, buy some fuel while I'm in the region just to keep this voyage going. I mean, I was trying to do like a giant roundabout journey where we hit everything, so I'll take us up to 20 fuel, and then... I can't decide. I think we're pretty much at the top of the map. I think Cecil's down here, if I recall correctly. And there's also something up to the north of us because our Z-Bat was flying off to it. Our Z-Bat just went down there, and I'm not sure what that means. Eots is a long way to the south. A word which phonetically brings back memories of World of Warcraft, or Shiots as we used to call it. I used to hate it when I got Shiots in my random queue. I'd be like, damn, Eots is the worst. Nobody likes this map. Ugh. Something about the Burning Crusade maps just totally sucked. I hated them all. I just didn't like the decor, I guess. I'm not a big fan of, like, crystalline stuff. Some people are, but I'm not. Is there anything even up here? Okay, so it looks like just Port Palmerston. I thought maybe there'd be something up here, but I guess not. 
I guess we'll go... Let's go slightly to the east and we'll unlock Dugans. I mean, our terror is going to be pretty bad by the time we get back from a voyage this long. And so my intent is that if our terror is going to be awful anyways... I'm thinking that we should just allow it to tick up, but we should hit everything we possibly can because I can fix the terror now. You just have to span that event with the girls at Hunter's Point, so... Let's go downwards. So we've got a little bit of something right here. Which I don't mind at all. As long as we're near land masses, I don't care. Stay alongside these as long as we can. I'm going to send out the Z-Bat to see what he can find. Eots is to the northeast. Let's go to Eots then. We'll check that out and see what it is. Just so that we can get it on our maps. A fallen stone. Now and then rocky fragments fall from the roof of the Neath. The decks of the older ships are pocked with scars. The sound is one no land lover knows and no sailor will ever forget. One has smashed glass and the... This one has smashed the glass of a deck binnacle. Ill omen, one sailor cries. The god in the roof. The storm is angry. Let's make a sacrifice to keep everybody happy. The sailors know the words. You mumble them. A gift of wine and fish is suitable, marked with the captain's blood. Ow. Bound for the copper wire and cast overboard from the bow. The package bobs for a moment, then is sucked beneath the ship. So we have Storm's Attention. We have Stone, Storm, and Salt. And we lost Terror. I guess if you make them stare at the ground right there, you only get you lose two terror and nothing else happens. I don't know if it's a good or a bad thing to have the gods on your case. I'm not really so... What the hell is that? It's a giant moth? What in the hell? I feel like Gandalf's going to be in here somewhere just being like, Oh yeah, it's my moth. Don't worry about it. It's like, damn. That's a really, really big moth, dude. I'm going to continue firing the Z-Bat by pressing the Z key if you're new to the game. You should... Oh, did I... I ran myself up on the rocks like an idiot. I feel like I clipped that, but I did. So, I was wrong. Let's go ahead and restart the engine back up. We took a little bit of damage. It was only one. I think the Eots might be the animal, actually. It might be that thing. Let's just make a quick cut across. I don't want to... Our terror is going to be bad by the time we get back to London anyway, so we might as well cut straight across the center. I think we want to go back over to, like, here-ish to get to Port Cecil. Speed the ship up slightly by throwing extra fuel up into the furnace. It looks like we aren't going to have an explosion. It'll take us a little bit for our temperature to get back down to where it was. But I think if we can go across this a little bit quicker. You got some distance to the northeast, yeah. I know. Continue sending out Z-Bats. Let's go ahead and stoke the furnace again. We'll watch the heat. Ah, when they put new fuel in. It doesn't cost us anything to do this, so you might as well do it if you like to tempt fate. The principles of coral. These corpse rainbow glow. Ooh, these. The corpse rainbow glow from beneath the waves echoes the stars above. I don't think this is the place where I really want to be, though. You've pushed the engines too far. Our engine temperature isn't high, though. How did that happen? This is supposed to only happen when your engine temperature gets too high. Like, we're at basically a normal, eh, damp the flames, whatever. A modest challenge, 61% chance. We lose two crew, 21 hull, and we failed in the challenge, it figures. Sometimes I don't even know why you even take any of the bonuses in this game, because they don't help. You still always have, like, a... It's basically a coin flip every time. Like, basically your stats are meaningless in this game. You're still just going to be flipping a coin. You might have, like, a 10% variance on flipping a coin, but... Eh. The stats don't really seem like they affect anything. Like, the way I see it is if you start with a bonus, you should basically automatically win anything with hearts. If you start with a bonus to irons, you should win anything with irons because you took that as, like, your ability. And there's no way in this game to raise anything efficiently. Like, you can't. It's not a thing that you can do within the confines of the game. Like, you, at, at best, you may eventually be able to raise your stats by, like, 10. Possibly. So... Since you can't raise your stats, I feel like whatever you put your bonus into, you should just automatically succeed at anything in that, since... Eh. 
Let's see here. We've got Port Cecil. We want to get our contact in the labyrinth. Okay, we got the strategic information. We want to get our port report. We want to explore the coral knoll around Port Cecil. Yeah, why not? An auroral rupture. Light grows on the far southwest. It begins like a distant bonfire, but very rapidly it becomes brighter and brighter. It looks remarkably like sunrise. Some of your crew fall to their knees. Others duck behind cover or shield their eyes. One cries, Dawn Machine Waking. We can look into the light. Interesting. It's a little bit weird. We can take cover. Really, our veils are, I'm sorry, our veils is terrible, so the fact that we can duck like that is interesting. Aw, uh, there's another thing down here. If you have the, it looks like a cook that's going to be added to the game. If you have both of them, they can look straight into the light. I guess we'll take the chance with cover. Light sheets over you, your hair crackles as if from a storm. You squint your eyes shut, but the radiance around you is bright enough that you see the pink of your eyelids. The light fades suddenly. Men and women cry out, curse, and one weeps. It's all for now. One fragment and one terror. Weird. And that big sharky thing is right there, and I don't want to like be anywhere near it. Let's go back to port. I'm going to go around the long way since we have the supply to do so. We've killed one of those in the previous episodes. We killed one. It wasn't too bad. We actually killed it flawless, but we have we had a critical with our illumination. And so it's not something that I can really take the credit for. The wreck of the Emperor Wolfgang. Oh, good. There's another one over here. Well, this might be it, ladies and gents. If it decides to make a hard turn on us. Oh, it doesn't look like it noticed us. Alright. Well, if it hasn't noticed us, then I'm not going to tempt fate by trying to get it to notice me any longer. I'm going to keep the engine steady. That one's coming around the other side of the reef. I'm going to try and keep myself close, but in order to avoid this guy, we may have to cut wide and take some terror, unfortunately. Yep. Oh, there it is. The one or two terror that we're going to take before we can get back to another landmass. Awesome. The aphotic, what does that say? Aphotic quills? It's kind of a weird word. I should probably look that up and figure it out. It seems like the kind of word that you could drop in a conversation and feel self-important. We have a light ship over here. Send out the Z-Bat to see where it goes. Whales lie some distance to the northeast. Okay, we're not going to whale right now. I may actually try and hit... I don't know what our best plan is right now. Do I still have news on board? No, I used it on my way out. Okay. Let's go back up north. We've got the supply to do it, and so we might as well. We're going to go back up north, and we're going to take the long way around. I am interested in fighting those sharks again, because I want to see what happens if you turn in the tooth to the monks. I feel like that's something that you probably get a major bonus from, because the critter is pretty mean. I mean, by comparison to everything else, I think it probably could one-shot you. It definitely kills your crew off, so you got to be careful about that. Let's make a jump for this light out here, the buoy. And I think we'll try and land in the Iron Fungus Company or whatever. Maybe take a couple turns right there, see if we can gather some supplies or something. Demos Gate, named for the navigator lost in the waves below. I don't know what that is right there. It's like a sea serpent or something. It's troublesome is what it is. I'm not going to fight him because our armor is really low right now. And he could conceivably take us out with one shot if he crits. I've done over 40 damage with one shot before, so I, I know that they can do it. I'd rather avoid the confrontation for now if I can help it. Until we're repaired up. After this episode, I'm going to go ship hunting and I'm going to run wine for a while. Iron and Misery Funging Station, we got that. T with the Factor, an interlude, and so he's gonna lose our terror, we gain supplies, and we gain fragments, that's good. You gather supplies, but your terror can't be higher than 50, okay. Not gonna do that then. They do have the Harbor Provisioners, but nothing else interesting is happening here. So let's attempt to keep our terror at a minimum as we cut through here. I think our best cut it's probably going to be through here and then back down the coast, and so that's what I'm going to go for. I'm 
All right. We done gone and made it. I may... Eh. Do I want to tempt fate with the light ship? Let's try it. Let's tempt fate with the light ship and see if we can make it out to Tanachuk. I'm gonna wait though. Ah, oh, never mind. It's coming around. My t I, s I crept right outside the radius with my momentum, unfortunately. Inertia. Inertia boned me. Inertia boned me hard. The light ship should get us right here. So now we've got bats. We'll go ahead and fight them. Although this time I think we actually will take the hunger reduction first. Then we'll take terror reduction with any other ones that decide to attack us. I don't know what stats I'm really leaning towards increasing right now. I'm thinking mirrors probably. And then we can buff irons just by adding guns to the deck. Yeah, I think that might be the way that I destroy. I like its definition. Destroy. We will throw them into the pot. And unfortunately, it slowed our engine down right there, so we are going to take some terror on our way through, which is a little bit of a letdown. Oh, you actually have two ships down here, and the beams cross. Normally, I understand that that's kind of a risky thing to do. You probably shouldn't do it, at least according to Ghostbusters, which I live my life by the law of Ghostbusters. I really do try to, anyways. I feel like it's a good doctrine to adhere to. Nonetheless, I think that... We'll go ahead and finish these bats off. We'll get the terror done right there. They've crossed the beams. It's too late to do anything about it, so you might as well live with it. Once you cross the beam, you can never go back. And that's funny because it has two meanings. Alright, so another group of bats down. I'm going to go ahead and reduce terror with them. We lose two terror. Oh, I thought you lost one from those. That's good. Losing two is even better. I'm going to come around a little tight right here. And then my intent is to follow the light ship like so. If you can be right in the middle of it, you can use it to hippity hop your way in between different locations without gaining any terror. But you gotta use it just right. We may still get terror from right here. Yeah, a little bit too close, unfortunately. Let me go ahead and about face by going in here. Oh, good, we can have dinner. Okay, so let's go ahead and we'll go with the minus 10 terror which puts us down below 50 which is always nice I don't have any news so what I'll probably do eh, I'd like to tempt the bats out but I don't think they're gonna go for it let's go back and gather our cash we'll go back to London we'll get our cash I'll run back over to here reduce our terror a little bit further what is our Things change in the neath our time, the healer of all look like. Oh, we actually don't have it listed right now, okay. It's unfortunate because I would like to know. Let's just go straight for London, and I think we're in for a pretty good grip of cash right now. We should make at least 500 echoes, maybe? I can't guarantee that we're going to make that much. After this episode, I'm going to go and run wine for probably an hour or two. I'll probably do it this evening before I go to bed. I'll probably run eight or nine loads down there. Get ourselves a good 2,000, 3,000 echoes that we can start to play around with. Which will put us essentially back to where we were. Coming back into port. Souls delivered, so we'll accept our payment. We got 200 echoes. Very, very good. And once more we find ourselves on the quayside. Aw, oh, man, he got us instantly with the next event. That sucks. All right, so he gave us a thousand. We got to go to Guider's Morn. Guider's Morn is out there, so that's a pretty long run that I don't really feel like making right now. It's going to be hard on our supplies. And it's going to be hard on our cash. I really don't feel like making the run out to Guider's Morn. Damn. We got a bad roll right there. We got a really bad roll. Okay, well, let's get the news. And we will go... <laughs> we could buy a house with the money and just be like, eh, what are you going to do about it? I think that would end badly for us. We might catch a knife if we did that, though. Do we have anybody? Okay, so nobody wants to join on with us. We put our ship in the dry dock, which I think is a good plan right now. Actually, let's turn in all of our port reports first. So strategic information, 150 echoes. Puts us up to 450. Now we'll turn in all of our port reports. Hunter's Keep, as always. Palmerston, as always. 
Good. And so they want us to go to Codex, the far north of London. We got really bad rolls right here. Typically you want these two to land near each other so that you don't waste a whole bunch of time running all over the place. And it's actually risky enough to where it's worth sitting and just save scumming and just reloading your game over and over again until you get them right next to each other. Because making this run, going up to Codex and then going to Guider's Moor is going to cost me almost twice as many supplies. Which means it diminishes on the profit that I make. I think we will... we don't carouse right now, that's fine. I don't think we need to. I think if we take... Let me look at my charts really fast. Guider's Morn is like right here. I think we can make it out there, I mean... Bad luck. I really don't feel like making the run up the Codex right now. I really, really hate it when my port reports land on Wither or Codex because they're just so far extended from anything else that it's just a giant waste of a run. Like, you just don't make enough money to justify it. I think what we'll try and do is let's dry dock up first because we've got all of our our helpful stuff. Hey, I'm clicking on you. A revelatory chart. I've never had one of those yet. Go back to the wolf stack docks. We will go to the dry dock. There it is. And I think what we'll do for right now is we'll go to the admiralty yards. Get ourselves fixed up to 75. We've got the news. So let's go on up to Hunter's Point. We can't return to London until we do this run over to Guider's Morn, unfortunately. And so that leaves me in a bad spot where I can't do the run down to... I can't, I can't run wine down to the monks until we get this job done. And so basically, I'm stuck in a position right now to where I have to go out to Guider's Morn right this second, which I don't find to be pleasing or pleasurable or acceptable. But business is business, I guess. We'll go up there and we'll handle it. Let's get our terror reduced slightly by having lunch again. It'll put us down to 32. Anything below 50 keeps me happy because then you have the... It diminishes the chance that you have a terrible, terrible critical failure where you gain like 40 terror from a random event and end up sinking your own ship in horror. Hunter's Keep. Okay, we have news. We'll go ahead and drop that in there. Lucy's going to lower that by 10. We also lose our hunger, which is nice. They're not accepting. Sometimes they let you do visitors like twice in a row. You saw it earlier. Every now and again it happens. And so I think we're going to let this episode go a little bit long. And what I'll try and do is I'll run back to Guider's Morn. And then off camera, I'll try and handle some of the other stuff. So I think the best way for us to do this is to go down like so. And I'm going to try and follow the islands all the way out there because our terror is kind of on the edge of the 50 precipice that you don't want it to be on. And if I can keep us below 50, like I said, I, I really prefer to. I don't want our sailors peeing all over the decks or anything like that. What I'm going to try and do is I'm going to try and meet up with the light right here. Let's go ahead and put the ship into a stop. I said stop. There we go. God, inertia. Killing me right now. Guider's Morn's right over here. The run's gonna be a little bit risky, but I think we'll be alright. I'm gonna try and go... Oh, they cross paths too. Okay, I never noticed that. So you've just gotta time this right. You gotta time your crossing. And so if we can get to right here, we can go out to... What was this over here? The Shepherd Isles, and we can take a port report from here as well to gain a little bit of extra cash along the way. Distant bells. Oh, that's right. We can reset our hunger. No, that was at the Chapel of Lights. Never mind. Those little red cinnamon cakes sound amazing. I love anything with cinnamon, and I'm a giant sucker for anything with sugar and cinnamon. Like, the second you mix sugar and cinnamon together, I'm in. I'm in and I'm down. And get past that big crab right there. God, that was close. We can take him. I just don't want to. Dock in Fieldhaven for a moment. Shepherd Isles, we can picnic. Let's go with Thornwell Croft gave us a Z story. Let's go with three graves and see what we get. Oh, really? Okay, so we get the Chelinet, right? They're hunters. They killed a turtle the size of London and built their city in its shell. A ship from the Chelinet came by hunting the midnight whale. Three of them had died cowards, so their bodies couldn't go into the Z. They paid us for the land and whale ivory. I still got a piece, but I keeps it safe. So you've got Memory of a Distant Shore and one Z story. That's actually probably one of the best hauls that we could have gotten from there. Let's take the port report as well while we're sitting here. 
And then I think I'm just going to make a straight shot now. Come on, speed the ship up. There's a giant crab coming. I don't know if you noticed this or not, but there are several large creatures that are very, very interested in consuming us. Large scavengers that would really love to use our bits to pad their tummy walls. Alright, light ship coming through. Resetting our light cooldown right there. Guider's Morn should be right here, I think. Unless I'm totally off, but I thought Guider's Morn was a dead east shot. Then if you go to the southeast slightly, east of Godfall, you'll find yourself at the Canet. Born Vedas Pillar. Pretty sure this is it. It's going to be down and around here somewhere. Yay, nay. There are no undiscovered islands within your Z-Bats range. Well, where's he going now? Okay, here it is. I recognize all the bridges and things. Guider's Morn, we made it. Lovely. So this is where I'm going to break off the episode. We'll pick up the package. I will... Actually, let's do our event so that I can head back to London and do my thing without having to worry about anybody missing anything. So I can start running wine. I'd like to make a little bit of money so that we can actually start the game back from where we were. Because we've done the exploration phase already, you know. So Guider's Morn. We'll go with... Explore the Morn. There's a surprising quantity of actual landscape on the Morn. It's vertical, admittedly, but we've already said that. And so we've got... A crew of Chelinate hunters are exchanging heated insults with a Canate Priveneer. It looks likely to end in blood. We can raise our own flag. The Chelonians are savage ghouls who live in a dead turtle. The Kaganians are decent towards our decadent cowards who can't hold a kingdom together. Linen is the sole bright light of civilization in the Neath. Perhaps you should point these things out if you want to act hard. They may be foreign, but they're halfway sophisticated. I would say the Kaganians. If you side with the Canid, I wonder if there's a way that you could end up getting inside the city, like they'll give you their ring or whatever. Let's take the risk. We failed in the challenge. We lost a crew. The Chelonians are fierce crew and successfully turned the battle against you and the Kaganians. You withdraw hastily to the safety of your ship. We lost crew and we gained terror. Lame. Super, super lame. Coin flips. We'll go ahead and turn that in. We can return to the Blind Bruiser to get our cash now. Take a port report while I'm here. I'm nervous. Lovely. We can gather intelligence. I guess you can just... I don't know if it's like... It looks like we're just gaining one terror every time we do that. We've got veils here, so we can try and gather intelligence. We failed in the challenge, and we lost another crew. God. And actually, we're in bad shape now. That means we're going to have to ride back slow-mo style, which is going to suck. It's going to be super boring going back slow-mo style. So my name is Splattercat. Thank you for joining me here in the Nerd Castle for another episode of Sunless Sea. I look forward to seeing you in the next episode. Take care out there, everybody, and hi-do.